Welcome back into the Rockers pregame show and welcome to those of you tuning in again on YouTube today as we get set to start the second half of 2022. It's the High Point Rockers and the Gastonia Honey Hunters picking up where half one ended yesterday. Rockers won eight to one yesterday, but everything is wiped clean. We start zero and zero beginning today. Let's take a quick look at today's starting lineups leading off for the Rockers in center field, Jay Gonzalez, Logan Morris in the first baseman will bat in the number two spot. Xander Wheel, the right fielder hits third, Jerry Downs at first base, the cleanup hitter. Uh, check that, Jerry Downs, the designated hitter, is the cleanup hitter. Quincy Lattimore will bat fifth and play left field today. Tyler Ladendorf, the second baseman, hits sixth. Michael Martinez at third base, bat seventh. Mike Galino behind the plate, hitting eighth. And Giovanni Alfonso is the shortstop, batting ninth. A little bit of uh, update from the issue on uh, Sunday with Ben Aklinski running into the wall. He has been placed on the injured list. I don't have any updates other than that at this time, and hopefully tomorrow we will get a little clearer picture on uh, the situation with Aklinski. Obviously, we hope it is nothing serious. Starting pitcher for the Rockers tonight, it is Nick Evangelista making his third start of the year. And for Gastonia, they're throwing Riley Hovis, 4-2 and two with a 5.53 earned run average. We'll dive into those numbers a little bit more here shortly. For the Honey Hunters, Hurley Rodriguez, the center fielder, leads off. Jack Reinheimer, the shortstop, batting in the number two spot. Joseph Rosa, the second baseman, hits third. Zach Jarrett in right field is the cleanup hitter. Reese Hampton playing left field will bat fifth. Jake Skoll, the designated hitter, in the number six spot. Raider Escanio, the third baseman, bats seventh. Emmanuel Tapia, the third base, or the uh, first baseman, rather, bats in the eighth spot. And former Rocker Stuart Levy will bat ninth. Well, for High Point, again, it, it kind of gives you the feeling that they really turn the corner at the right possible time, the best possible time. High point comes after an 8-1 to win yesterday where it really felt like they did everything well. The pitching was good, the hitting was good, and the defense was fantastic as well. So, uh, you know, you, you heard Giovanni Alfonso in the pregame interview today on MixLR, and he said he felt like the big difference between this second half and the last couple second halves is the fact that he feels like the Rockers are addressing some pitching needs earlier in the second half, i.e. the end of the first half to go into the second half, and he thinks that may uh, help the Rockers out in the long run as they look for a playoff spot. Teams are heading out onto the field now for the National Anthem, and that means that it's almost time for the second half of baseball to start. We'll step aside, but when we come back, it's the Rockers, it's the Honey Hunters, and it's the second half of the Atlantic League season. It's next on the Rockers Baseball Network.
Well, while you don't have to throw everything completely out of the window from the first half, the big important thing, you can wipe the records clean. Everybody's zero and zero. We do know the Honey Hunters and the Blue Crabs are in the postseason, but now we begin to chase two more spots on the line, and the High Point Rockers feel extremely confident they can grab one of those two spots during the course of the next 66 ball games. Good evening, everyone. Kendrick Fruits here with you from Caramont Health Park in Gastonia, North Carolina, for the start of tonight's game between the High Point Rockers and the Gastonia Honey Hunters, more importantly, the start of half number two. Speaking of starts, Riley Hovis, the starting pitcher for Gastonia today, four and two, 5.53 the ERA. Opponents only hitting 254 against him. The biggest thing, though, the, the, the number that really stands out to me, 11 home runs allowed. He's a guy who has gotten bit by the long ball this year. And because of that, Riley Hovis uh, needs to be careful, especially with some of these guys in the middle of the Rockers lineup. But for High Point, if he makes a mistake, you have got to feast on it. Also, in an interesting note, we are about to set a record here at Caramont Health Park for what will be the hottest first pitch in High Point Rockers history. The hottest coming into today, 95 degrees. Right now, it is 96. So we are staring at the hottest game in team history right in the face as Jay Gonzalez steps into the left-handed box. It will be Gonzalez, Morrison, Wheel, Downs, Lattimore, Lattendorf, Martinez, Galino, and Alfonso. Jay Gonzalez yesterday coming off a fantastic evening of five RBI day, including his first home run of the year. He's looking to pick up exactly where he left off. Riley Hovis doesn't use the windup. The righty set delivers first pitch of the second half is a ball high, and we are underway at 623. It is 96 degrees and partly cloudy. Today's first pitch time and weather brought to you by Grandover Resorts in Greensboro. Live, work, enjoy. That pitch down low, and the count 2-0 to Gonzalez now. Gonzalez hitting at 303. There's a strike called, and the count one, uh, two and one. Gastonian today with the white pants, black jerseys. Hunters across the chest in block letters with, of course, the gold honey dripping from them. Gold numbers on both the front and back of the uniforms as Gonzalez takes outside three and one. And for the fourth day in a row, the Rockers wearing their military appreciation jerseys. Gray pants today with the military appreciation jerseys, which are a white camo base. Left sleeve is the star's design of the United States flag. Right sleeve is the stripes. This one grounded to first base. Emmanuel Tapia will grab it and step on the back, and that's the first out of the inning. A reminder about those Rockers jerseys. They are available to bid on the Live Source app, but you only have 35 minutes left to do so. Bidding for these jerseys closes at 7 o'clock Eastern. Proceeds go to Triad Honor Flight. Download the free Live Source app or go to their website to place your bid. Here's Logan Morrison moved up to the number two spot tonight, hitting at 298 home runs, 27 runs batted in. Yesterday, Logan Morrison stole his first base in 1,482 days. That pitch a strike and the count nothing in one. Last stolen base came June 13th of 2018. One coming to Morrison. He swings, grounds it to second. Right there is Rosa. And the throw on to first for the second out of the inning. Let's set Gastonia defensively. Reese Hampton is in left field. Hurley Rodriguez in center. Zach Jarrett is in right. Rager Escanio, the third baseman. Jack Reinheimer at short. Second baseman is Joseph Rosa. Emmanuel Tapia at first base today. And Stuart Levy is behind the plate. Here is Xander Wheel. He's brought his average all the way up to 291. Just named the Rockers, or actually was not named the Rockers player of the week. I voted for him, but 
Apparently a 353 average, four home runs and eight RBIs doesn't cut it anymore. <laughs> Here comes the 0-1 to wheel. He swings, high fly ball into right center, not deep, going back is Rosa, coming in Jarrett, and it's Rosa who puts it away for the final out of the inning. Rockers go down one, two, three in the top of the first. We head to the bottom of inning number one, scoreless on the Rockers Baseball Network. Nick Evangelista making his third start for High Point today. The righty is 1-1 one one with a 4.91 ERA. He's pitched 11 innings, 10 hits, 5 strikeouts, and 3 walks. It's been a pretty simple plan for Evangelista. He pitches to contact, and he works quickly. He's a guy who can generate a lot of ground balls, and the Rockers infield pretty good at gobbling those up. Lineup for the Honey Hunters again. Rodriguez, Reinheimer, Rosa. Jarrett, Hampton, Skoll, Escanio, Tapia, and Levy. Again, we talked about it a little bit in the pregame show. We started 0-0 zero and zero today, so one of the things Giovanni Alfonso talked about in the pregame show was how important it was to get off to a fast start today. Not just today, but really the first week or so of the season. He said you want to be able to start fast. That way, if you do... Uh, slump at some point, which he said is inevitable because baseball uh, is a type of game that evens out successes with failures. He said you want to make sure you have enough of an advantage early where it cushions it and you're able to withstand whenever your cold stretch happens. Here's the 0-1. Hit on the ground towards second base. It's going to get through a base hit for Hurley Rodriguez to lead this game off for Gastonia. Now he did that yesterday and he was promptly caught stealing moments later. We'll see if if he attempts a little bit of redemption here today or whether or not Mike Galino behind the plate is able to do what Dakota Mulk yesterday. We'll go ahead and set the Rockers defensively. Quincy Lattimore in left. Jay Gonzalez gets the start in center. Xander Wheel back in the starting lineup today. He is in right. Michael Martinez at third base. Giovanni Alfonso at short. Tyler Ladendorf the second base. Logan Morrison at first. And we just mentioned behind the plate is Galino. Here's Jack Reinheimer. First pitch coming from Evangelista and that is a strike. Home plate umpire today is Justin Burton. Marcus Neal over at first base. Logan Morrison just about picked off Rodriguez over there. But Marcus Neal says safe. Over at third base is Calvin Baker. A one coming to Reinheimer. There's a fastball. Ooh, wow, where did that one miss? Look good from here. We will wait and see what the pitch tracker says. It is a ball and a strike from Evangelista. In his last time out, well, first a slow roller third base side. It'll go foul. In his last time out, Evangelista threw 87 pitches up from 67 in his debut. Mm, yeah, I've seen the pitch tracker of that uh, ball one call. Looks like about half of it covered the zone. Here comes the one-two. Another check over to first base. And back in safely again is 
Hurley Rodriguez. Evangelista set, the righty holds it, now fires. Reinheimer swings, high fly ball, shallow right field, coming in wheel, going out Ladendorf, and it's Tyler making the catch. That's the first out of the inning. Brings up Joseph Rosa, hitting a 333, 11 home runs, and 52 runs batted in. Rockers have recorded the first to pitch here to Rosa and Evangelista steps off. Rockers have recorded some really good outings by their starting pitching recently. Evangelista looking to continue that streak. We'll break those numbers down a little bit later on. First to pitch to Rosa, fastball strike. Specifically, the big number that we have kind of been watching recently a lot of starters have been dominant through the first four innings of the game. Then, depending on what happens, continue that or not, that kind of splits off in different directions. But the common thread has been that these starting pitchers are practically impossible to score on in the first four innings recently. Saw that with Liam O'Sullivan yesterday. What a debut. Runner goes, that pitch will miss. The throw down to second, a good one. Oh, Alfonso's tag is called late. Rodriguez must have just got in under the tag. Alfonso tried to sell it, but it will be the 13th stolen base for Hurley Rodriguez. Nothing really went according to plan there. The pitch missed for a ball, and the throw down to second just a little bit late. Again, we talked about this some yesterday. You are not going to stop Gastonia's running game, but can you minimize the damage? That's the big question. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. There's a strike on the inside corner. One ball, two strikes now. Pretty overcast here. We talked about the fact that it's really, really warm out. Giovanni did the pregame interview up here in the press box with me. He told me that somebody had... Uh, taking the turf temperature earlier today was 152 degrees. Here's the one two. Swung on deep drive, right field side foul. And I believe it too, because if I remember correctly, we did that at Truist Point one time. And I think it was 140 something uh, turf temperature. So I do not doubt it at all. comes the one two swung on lined into right field going back on it Xander wheel flags it down as he was chasing towards the foul line but makes the catch and that's the second out of the inning that was a very effortless looking swing by Rosa and he still was able to hit it a long way into right field I would say if you had to pick a quote unquote most complete hitter in the lineup Rosa is it here is Zach Jarrett 260 with six home runs and 30 runs batted in also stolen 18 bases. Here's the thing about this Gastonia team, specifically in the stolen base categories, is that pitch misses low. They would have, let's count, one, two, three, four, five, six, six players with more stolen bases than the current Rockers leader, which is Johnny Field with 10. Active leader for the Rockers. That pitch down low, and the count 2-0. Active leader for the Rockers right now. Well, it would have been Ben Aklinski with eight. He's on the injured list now. Michael Russell has eight, also on the injured list. So the leader on the roster today is Jay Gonzalez with seven. Here's the 2-0. Also misses low, and the count 3-0. So I don't know, were we supposed to say happy opening day today or what? <laughs> it being the start of the second half. Opening day part two. Swing and a miss there. Jarrett, green light on three and oh, and they count three and one. That 
got the opening day of the second half then to you, I guess. Here's the 3 1. Evangelista holds the set, looking back at Rodriguez. Now fires. Line drive into center field. Jay Gonzalez two steps back and puts it away. Final out of the inning. So the leadoff base hit by Hurley Rodriguez. He ends up stranded at second. We go to the second. No score on the Rockers Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, no score. Rockers have four, five, and six coming up. That's Jerry Downs, Quincy Lattimore, and Tyler Ladendorf. Had the pleasure just a few moments ago of meeting the father of Nathan Bates. And it's nice, uh, always nice to see some of the family of our ball players here. And uh, he came over, introduced himself. Very nice gentleman, and certainly enjoy having Nathan on the team. He was impressed by the fastball yesterday. It's hard to see the gun at Truist Point, but I can see it really well here at Caramont Health Park. And Nathan Bates, a couple of 96 mile an hour heaters yesterday. Here's Jerry Downs, 279, nine home runs and 32 runs batted in. Hovis fires first pitch to Downs. There's a called strike on the outside corner. And the count goes to nothing and one. Honey Hunters have the only hit of the game. The base hit by Hurley Rodriguez that led off the first inning. Hovis fires. Here comes the pitch. Downs under it. Pops it up into shallow right. It's the second baseman Rosa calling for it. And puts it away. And Hovis has retired the first four hitters he's faced. Quincy Lattimore comes up, hitting at 259, 10 home runs, 36 runs batted in. Rockers have reached 10 hits or more in six of their last nine games. They've also homered in 10 straight. The club record is 14 straight. So starting to get into another record watch territory. First pitch to Lattimore. And the count 1 and 0. Oh. Obviously, home runs doesn't guarantee a win, but when you come somewhere here at Caramont Health Park, it certainly becomes a tool in your tool bag that you would like to be able to take advantage of. Here's the 1 0. Oh. Big swing. There was the home run swing. Comes up empty, though, and the count 1 1. Again, left field line here at Caramont Health Park is 3 0 4. There is about a 25 foot wall in left field, you've got to get it up over. Fastball called a strike up at the top and inside corner of the zone. And the count, one ball, two strikes. Hovis delivers the one, two. And a sidearm delivers that one. It misses well outside, two, two. One of the interesting things and I alluded to it a little bit last night. It feels like most of the home runs we see, they'll go to right field. Specifically from left-handed hitters. Of course, the only home run yesterday came from a lefty, but Jay Gonzalez went to left center. Here's the 2-2. Lattimore pops it up. 
Foul territory, first base side, long run for Tapia, and he will put it away. Well, of the five outs recorded by Riley Hovis to start the game, three of them have been infield pop-ups, and two of them have been ground outs. So here's Tyler Ladendorf now hitting at 254, seven home runs, 24 batted in. Tough thing about the Rockers have special uniforms. Everybody's numbers switch around. Ladendorf wearing 17 today, was wearing number five yesterday, wears number nine usually. Michael Martinez wearing his third different number in as many days. That pitch down low. And the count 1 0. Oh. One oh coming. There's a fastball strike on the inside corner. 1 1. Riley Hovis. Cruising through the first five hitters. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Ladendorf takes just inside. And the count 2-1. and one. Rockers, I, I believe, have seen Hovis each of the first two times that these two squads have played. Ladendorf hits this one on the ground to third. Escanio picks it up. And the throw to first in time. And that is the final out of the inning. But to conclude that, yes, Hovis 2-0 with a 5.06 against the Rockers. He has allowed three home runs, but so far he's retired all six Rockers that he's faced. We go to the bottom of the second inning. We are scoreless on the Rockers Baseball Network. Bottom of inning number two, Nick Evangelista facing five, six, and seven. That's Reese Hampton, Jake Skoll, and Raider Escanio. We are scoreless, waiting to see who is going to draw first blood at the beginning of the 2022 second half. Well, again, the Rockers will be taking on either Gastonia or Southern Maryland in every single weekend for the next two months. So... See whether that brand of familiarity will lead to a successful start for High Point or not. Here's Reese Hampton hitting at 242, four home runs, 21 batted in. And Evangelista fires high, and they count one ball, no strikes. We know our starters all the way through Friday. This one hit on the ground, right to first. Morrison takes it himself. A quick run to first. Morrison slides and gets the speedy Hampton. Morrison, I think, was waiting on Evangelista to get there and realized he wasn't going to get there in time, so he had to race Hampton himself, and Morrison, with the heads-up slide, beats Hampton to the bag. Here's Jake Skoll, 230, 11 home runs, and 25 batted in. 
to the Rockers go Evangelista tonight. Yvonne Pinheiro makes his home debut tomorrow. Craig Stim goes Thursday. And then back here on Friday, it is rookie Jonah Scalero. That pitch a strike on the outside corner. The count nothing and one. Former Major Leaguer Zach Godley going tomorrow for the Honey Hunters. A 16-game winner for the Diamondbacks a few years ago. 1-0 with the Honey Hunters. Then John Anderson, who's been... Mr. Reliable for Gastonia goes on Thursday. Popped up, third base side foul and out of play. And the count is nothing and two. Well, as we alluded to earlier today, uh, unfortunately, the injured list has expanded yet again. This time, adding Ben Aklinski to it. So Aklinski, Barbado, Kassad, Choplik, Church, Proctor, Russell, Uscali. Eight players on the injured list. That pitch fouled off, count nothing and two. The good news, though, Jason Bradford has come off of the inactive list. So the bullpen is at full strength, with the exception of Adam Choplik. That pitch fouled off, though, and the count nothing and two. This is the most position players the Rockers have had on the injured list at uh, any one time this year with three between Proctor, Aklinski, and Michael Russell. Count nothing and two to Skoll. Here's the pitch from Evangelista. That one, well, it missed. I can't tell you where it missed because I don't know. Mike Galino about threw that one down to Michael Martinez thinking it was strike three. Then had to double clutch because he didn't get the call. Here comes the one-two. That one's fouled off. Yeah, again, the pitch tracker that we watch is not official, but that entire baseball was in the strike zone. It's a ball and two strikes to Skoll. Reached double-A in the New York Yankees organization. It's his highest level of affiliated ball. Here's the one-two from Evangelista. That one also misses outside. The count two and zero. Oh. One out. Bottom of inning number two. We're scoreless. And Evangelista fires the two-two, and that's smacked foul. Third base side. very surprised we have not uh, heard any fireworks yet today we heard them all throughout the afternoon yesterday skull fouls that off now I understand yesterday was the actual 4th of July but last year that did not stop us we heard fireworks here in Gastonia July 5th all day as well swing and a miss. Strike three. And took him a little later than he thought, but Evangelista finally picked up his first strikeout of the day. That brings up Raider Escanio now. 261, two home runs, 24 batted in. Escanio was not the third baseman yesterday. That was, <laughs> excuse me, that was Luis Roman. First pitch, a strike, and the count nothing and one. Another fastball. This one, though, misses inside. One ball, one strike to Escanio. Raider Escanio hitting 313 against the Rockers with three runs batted in through five games. There's a strike called low. I think that uh, Evangelista might have gotten a gift on that one. They count one and two, though. Here comes the pitch, and that's skied out into right center. Xander Wheel calling for it. Xander Wheel makes the catch, and that's the final out of the second inning. So, one, two, three for Nick Evangelista. And we head to the third, still scoreless, on the Rockers Baseball Network.
top of the third. And we are scoreless, Rockers and Honey Hunters. And Riley Hovis will face the 7-8-9 part of the lineup as Gastonia's uh, mascot Bam up to his normal tricks. He's uh, doused a stadium worker in water, grabbed another bucket, threw it at a fan, and then that bucket was confetti. So that's uh, what all the commotion was that you heard. But we are about ready to begin the third inning. Rockers again, 7-8-9, Martinez, Galino, and Giovanni Alfonso. Michael Martinez hitting right at 300 with two home runs and 17 runs batted in. Hovis comes set, and the first pitch, Martinez showed bunt, pulled back, and it's ball one. Hovis at 20 pitches through two. Nick Evangelista, 32 through two, not bad either. Here comes the 1-0. Hovis slings it a little bit from the side there, misses outside, though, two balls, no strikes. Normally kind of comes about three quarters. Sometimes you'll see it dip down just a little bit further than that. Here comes the 1-0. And there's a called strike. And the count to, or the 2-0 rather was called strike and it's two and one. Scoreboard's been about one pitch behind at times today. Here comes the 2-1. And Martinez, a big swing and a miss, off speed low. And the count one, uh, two and two. Rockers still looking for their first base runner of the game, of the half here in the top of the third. Martinez pops this one into left, backing up a couple of steps. Hampton still backing up, now makes the catch. That's the first out of the third inning, and that'll bring up Mike Galino. That is the first out recorded on a ball to the outfield. Galino hitting a 290 with a home run, 10 batted in. Here comes the first pitch to Galino. And he takes down low. Looked like a slider sweeping down into the left-handed box. One of the other things about Hovis, walk numbers not bad, only 19 in 59 innings of work. So he's a guy that you can't necessarily wait out. As that pitch will miss in the count. Uh, actually, it was called a strike in the count 1-1. One one from Hovis. Galino just gets a piece of it and sprays it foul. One ball, two strikes. We mentioned a little bit of a cloudy afternoon. Wind blowing just lazily out towards the left. Should be good from a rain situation. And it's a good thing that we're here in Gastonia as that pitch misses to the count. Goes to two and two. High point currently under a severe thunderstorm warning. And it's going to rain probably for the next four hours in high point. So good thing that we are down south here on this Tuesday evening. Here comes the 2-2. And Galino just gets a piece of it again up and out of play right field side. It's going to be interesting going on later this week when you look at the forecast in High Point tomorrow and Thursday, decent chances of rain. Then you come to Estonia, get decent chances of rain again there. Galino hits this one, weekly off the end of the bat, right back to Hovis, throws in time, and that will retire Galino.
is Giovanni Alfonso, hitting at 314, two home runs, and 19 batted in. Tonight passed Stephen Cardulo for the most hits in High Point Rockers history. We were joking about it earlier today, and he said, uh, excuse me, I thought there was going to be a sneeze there. No, he said uh, he thought that he was glad it was over, and now he could focus on trying to put some distance on himself and whoever else was chasing him. First pitch call to strike, nothing in one. I told him he better not get cold because Quincy Lattimore's not that far behind him either. A one coming to Alfonso. Off speed, just off of the low and outside corner. And the count goes to 1-1. One, one. Big hole right up the middle. Hovis kicks and fires the 1-1. One, one. Alfonso up and over. Off-speed pitch, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Riley Hovis has retired his first eight hitters that he has faced. Here comes the one-two. Hovis holding that set still now delivers the one-two, and Alfonso tips it into the glove, strike three. That's the first strikeout tonight for Riley Hovis and the Rockers hitless through three innings. We go to the bottom of the third. We're scoreless all around on the Rockers baseball network. Slow offensive start for both teams, both in the game and in the half. And, well, the Rockers at least hope it continues for Gastonia here in the third inning. Nick Evangelistas look good through his two. He'll face eight, nine, and one. Tapia, Levy, and Hurley Rodriguez up to this point through two and a half innings. Hurley Rodriguez, the only player who has reached base today, he led off the game with a single for Gastonia in the bottom of the first. Here's Emmanuel Tapio, who did not play yesterday, takes low in the count 1-0. 245 hitter with four home runs and 26 runs batted in. 1-0 from Evangelista. Tapio swings, hits this one deep in the air, down the left field, right field side. Xander Wheel watches, it's gone. Emmanuel Tapia hits his fifth home run of the year, and Gastonia takes a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the third. Well, that's a ball that Evangelista just leaves too much over the plate. Tapia able to turn on that one. And although he may not be the number one home run threat in this lineup, he's a guy that can do some damage, especially down that left field side. Uh, right field side, rather. Here's Stuart Levy. Levy, the catcher, hitting at 221, four home runs, 25 batted in. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about some of the splits. Oh, Levy cranks that. That's gone. Oh, no, it, it did stay in. It looked like it was way out of here, but it stayed in. Lattimore made the catch in left field. 
Levy's out there looking like, how did that ball stay in? It sounded like it was absolutely crushed off of the bat. Well, we will hold that thought about Stuart Levy and his splits this year. Since he was retired on the first pitch. So here's Raider or, uh, Hurley Rodriguez. Rodriguez one for one. Base hit, his first time up, first pitch. Missed outside, ball one. Rodriguez at least entertaining the idea of a bunt. one -oh, fastball, that misses just off the outside corner, 2-0. Oh. Angelista holds the set, 2-0 -oh on the way. That's a fly ball into right, Xander Wheel coming in. And to his glove side, that is left towards the foul line. He makes the catch. And that is the second out of the third inning with Jack Reinheimer, the batter. That brings up your shortstop, Jack Reinheimer. Well, for Nick Evangelista, that is his second home run he is allowed. And what is now coming up on 14 innings of work. So overall, averaging one home run allowed by Seven innings, uh, excuse me, seven innings. That puts you right around pretty solid uh, company or pretty solid shape, especially if you're a five or six inning guy. Ooh, he drops Reinheimer to a knee with that swing, and the count goes to 1-1. One, one. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. That's down low. Good scoop there by Galino, and the count goes to two and one. Gastonia on the board first here today. In the fourth inning, we'll take a look at the Atlantic League scoreboard, see what else is going on. There's a line drive into left field. Lattimore goes into the gap, flags it down. Final out of the inning. Three flyouts for Nick Evangelista. Unfortunately, they came after a solo home run from Emmanuel Tapia. So. That home run gives the Honey Hunters a one to nothing lead. We head to the top of the fourth inning on the Rockers Baseball Network. Top of the fourth inning, Gastonia with a one to nothing lead over the Rockers, thanks to the Emmanuel Tapia home run that led off the bottom of the third inning. And so for the Rockers, it's the top of the lineup here against Riley Hovis, Gonzalez, Morrison, and Wheel. We'll see how the top of the lineup fares against Hovis. As they go that second time, Riley got through the Rockers' order the first time through over just 35 pitches through three innings. Evangelista not in bad shape either, 42. Here's Jay Gonzalez grounded out to first base to start his afternoon. And he'll head back into the left-handed box. So, of course, as the afternoon progresses into the evening, so too uh, progressing and changing the weather forecast here is starting to get pretty overcast. And we are being told, as the first pitch comes here to Gonzalez, Misses outside, 1-0. Oh. 
A line of thunderstorms will be making their way in at about 8.45, 9 o'clock. So we're still about two hours a little less than away. We should be in good shape uh, to get the majority, if not the entirety, of this game in as Gonzalez takes a strike at the knees, count one and one. Remember yesterday we saw a little bit of rain, what was it, the second inning I guess, lasted for about 10 minutes and then dissipated. 1-1 one, one coming to Gonzalez, big swing and a foul, the count one and two. It sent a lot of fans scrambling as the overhang area here at Caramont Health Park doesn't really stretch out that far into the seating section. So it did uh, cause a little movement. There's the one, two, Gonzalez takes that one down low, blocked up by Levy and rolls down the first baseline. So for High Point, first thing that uh, they need to focus on, or the, the, the biggest thing, is just getting a base runner. Riley Hovis has kept him off of the base paths, retiring all nine he has faced up to this point. Here comes the 2-2. There's a firework. Was wondering where they were, way inside. Gonzalez has to scooch out of the way, and the count goes full. Jade hitting now at 301. Close to qualifying for the team lead in batting average. With the injury to Wiklinski, he'll get, and then the departure of Johnny Field, obviously, he'll see a lot of time in the outfield, and he'll be able to qualify here before too long. Here comes a payoff. That's outside ball four. Rockers have a base runner. Lead off walk here to Jay Gonzalez. That brings up Logan Morrison, who grounded out to third his first time up. Big power bats here. Morrison, then Xander Wheel. And Jerry Downs and Lattimore, too. This is a stretch of the Rockers lineup that is not to be taken lightly. First pitch coming to Morrison. Big swing and a pop-up third base side. Long run for Escanio. Does he have room? No. He goes to the railing, and the ball falls just on the other side. Logan Morrison stays alive. Count nothing in one. Rockers stole two bases yesterday as part of a double steal. Lattimore and Morrison. We'll see if Jay Gonzalez thinks about running any. Not a Rockers team that stole a lot of bases in the first half. Only 49 steals in half number one. Morrison under this one, pops it up in the infield. Joseph Rosa there and makes the catch. So Morrison out. They're joking over there that uh, Calvin Baker didn't signal infield fly loud enough and Joseph Rosa <laughs> trying to plead his case by dropping that ball. He should have a double play, but smiles all around over there. So here's Xander Wheel and a pinch hit RBI double yesterday. Wheel hitting 291, 17 homers, 55 RBIs on pace to shatter both the Rockers' single season home run and RBI marks. Fastball low, 1 0. Current Rockers' single season home run record 27. Wheel on pace for 34. Current RBI record 81. Wheel on pace for 110. Throw over to first base, Jay Gonzalez back in standing. He's trying to stretch out his lead just a little bit there off of first base. First pitch coming to Wheel. Runner goes. Wheel takes. 
The throw is late down to second base. So Jay Gonzalez give him his eighth stolen base of the year. The pitch missed to Xander. We only count 2-0. We wondered if they were going to let Gonzalez run a little bit. Remember his final year of college, University of Mount Olive, he was a base stealing threat. And he has been at times during his pro career, just kind of a matter of how much he's let, or uh, how much uh, leash he's been able to get in terms of who lets him run and who doesn't. That pitch missed a wheel, count three and oh. Also a note that stolen base for Jay Gonzalez, the Rockers 50th as a team in the 2022 season. 50 steals, 75 home runs as a collective unit. And now with one out, the Rockers have a runner in scoring position for their best in driving in this, uh, driving in runners this year. Wheel takes outside ball four. And that's two walks here this inning for Hovis. Rockers still hitless, but mounting a little bit of an offensive challenge here in the top of the fourth. Here's Jerry Downs. Jerry Downs popped out to second base his first time up. In the bottom of the fourth inning, we'll give you that peak of the Atlantic League scoreboard. Later on, we will take a look at our historical player spotlight today as well. Down swings, ropes this one into left center field. That'll get down a base hit. They're waving around Jay Gonzalez. He will score. We're going to be tied. It's an RBI base hit for Jerry Downs, and it's a 1-1 game. Rockers have their first hit of the game. Runners now at second and first with still one out. Gonzalez scoring from second. So that puts Xander Wheel at second base. And here's Quincy Lattimore popped up in foul territory, first base side. Hovis set, first pitch on the way. Runners break, and that ball gets away from Levy. Xander Wheel took off for third base, and, and I think we saw the exact same thing from Alex Holderbach yesterday. A catcher got up and was starting to look at making the throw before they secured the catch. We made the allusion to football in the sense of, uh, in football sometimes a receiver will start to look up the field before uh, securing the catch. I think we see the same thing there. Levy was looking to throw before he had the ball. Here comes a 1-0 to Lattimore. He swings, high fly ball deep into right field, or left field, no chance, Rockaby baseball. A three-run homer for Quincy Lattimore. Rockers take a four-to-one lead here in the top of the fourth. So for Jerry, uh, for uh, Quincy Lattimore, that's one he needed. It's been a little bit since his last home run coming on the 24th of June. And now you keep an eye on his milestone watches. He is now... Four home runs behind Stephen Cardulo for the all-time lead, and now four RBIs away from 1,000 in his career. By the way, that was scored a wild pitch on Hovis. Here's Ladendorf, swings first pitch, pops it up, foul, first base side, and it gets out of play. The Rockers have now hit a home run in 11 straight games. one -oh, misses down low. Two balls, no strikes to Ladendorf. Here comes the 2-1. There's a strike at the knees. Well, the home run from Lattimore has certainly silenced the fan base here. They were buzzing after the home run from Tapia. Here's a 2-2, high and tight, and the count goes full. 
Rockers have sent six to the plate, including Ladendorf, and so far only one of them have been retired. It has been a walk, pop out, walk, single, and home run. Here comes the 2-2 from Hovis, delivers. Ladendorf lines it down the left field side. That'll get down for a base hit. It's going to kick around in the corner. Let's see if he heads for second. He does. Turns on the Jets. Here comes the throw to second. It gets away from Reinheimer. Ladendorf stays there. Is, is backed up by Manuel Tapia. But Tyler Ladendorf into second base with a double. A little slow to get up there. Reggie Harris is going to go out and talk to Riley Hovis. Had retired every hitter he had faced up to this point. But the Rockers have started to get to him here in the fourth inning. So with that said, we will take a look at a few things coming up here for the Rockers. They're back home tomorrow and Thursday. Grab your tickets at highpointrockers.com. Also a heads up about tomorrow's game. Tomorrow, so it's Kernersville night. Show proof of your Kernersville residency and you can receive 50% off of your entire ticket order. They had, uh, they did this earlier this year and, and uh, honestly, right as I was about to say it, I'm now drawing a blank on what night it was earlier this year. But uh, again, if you have uh, proof of Kernersville residency, you get 50% off your tickets. A 635 first pitch tomorrow. I think it was Archdale. It was, yeah, it was Archdale night earlier this year. That's what it was. But uh, again, first pitch 635. Gates open at 6. If you're not able to make it, Rockers pregame show on MixLR begins at 6 with YouTube joining a little while later. First pitch to Michael Martinez, a strike. High fastball there in the count 1-1. One, one. I should note for Lattimore, that was his 11th home run. RBIs 37, 38, and 39. Lattendorf takes the lead off of second. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Martinez. Swings, grounds it to first. Tapia having to back up on it. And he will beat Martinez to the bag, but Tyler Lattendorf heads to third on the play. So with two outs, that'll bring up Mike Alino, and the Rockers have a chance for more. As Galino heads to the right-handed batter's box. I'm going to be honest with you. Every time we look at the radar here, it is getting worse. That pitch outside, and the count 1-0. When I got here today, there was a 20% chance of rain all evening. Now there's a 50 and 60% chance in the next hour or so. Galino swings, pops it up foul. That gets out of play. And the count goes to 1-1. One one. Again, you've got to get through... The way things are going right now, five innings for it to count as a complete game. We're in the top of the fourth. Hovis set. Here's the pitch, and that's inside. And the count goes to two and one. Playing the radar again. Rain expected. It, it says still about 8.45, 9 o'clock, so... We're still about an hour and a half or so away from that point. Here's the 2-1. Galino swings, a little flare out towards right center. Could be trouble falling fast. That ball's going to drop. It gets past Jarrett. Ladendorf scores on an RBI base hit from Mike Galino, and it's a 5-1 Rockers lead. Just a little flare the other way. And it lands in the baseball Bermuda Triangle between an infielder and two outfielders. 
Runner at first base, and here's Giovanni Alfonso, the ninth rocker to come up this inning. Hovis comes set, first pitch on the way to Alfonso, and he takes up high ball one. Well, of course, Gastonia has nothing to lose here in the second half. They're already going to the postseason, but I think if yesterday in the beginning of this game or any indication, the Rockers are here to show that what happened the first six times these teams played, this is not the identity of the High Point Rockers. This is a team that's much more well-rounded than that. That pitch up high as well, 2-0. Hovis ready with the 2-0. Alfonso takes a strike up at the top of the zone, and the count goes to 2-1. and one. Jay Gonzalez led off this inning with a walk. He stands in the on-deck circle, or at least near it. Hovis set. Here comes the 2-1. And Alfonso tied up on the inside fastball, 2-2. Two and two. Next pitch for Riley Hovis will be his 67th. He started this inning at 35, so a 32-pitch inning. If it ends here on this pitch. Here comes the 2-2. Alfonso shoots it out to right. Jarrett backing up a little bit, still backing up, makes the catch as he is backpedaling. That's the final out of the inning, but the Rockers put five runs on the board. RBI hits from Jerry Downs and Mike Galino sandwich a three-run home run from Quincy Lattimore. We head to the bottom of the fourth, Rockers five, and Honey Hunters one on the Rockers Baseball Network. Well, Nick Evangelista has only made one mistake through three innings, and the Rockers' offense was here to tell Nick it's okay to make a mistake every now and then. We got your back. They got it back in a big way. Five runs in the fourth inning, so Nick Evangelista looking to come out here and make that stand up. He'll be facing three, four, and five. That's Rosa, Jarrett, and Reese Hampton as we get to the bottom of the inning. It means at the Atlantic League scoreboard. Yesterday, the Genomes and Legends squared off in a doubleheader today it's lancaster and york in a twin bill first game just concluded a few uh, moments ago and it was the revolution coming away with a four to two victory game two is scheduled here shortly long island and staten island it's a four nothing shutout right now for the ferry hawks in the top of the fourth inning and the blue crabs shutting out the dirty birds three to nothing after two and the genomes on top of lexington also by a shutout three nothing after two innings of play there as well. Also, to tie up a loose end from yesterday, is that first pitch a strike to Rosa, count nothing in one. The Dirty Birds do in fact have Denson Hole now. They acquired him yesterday morning. And so, Hull, who had been a starter from day one in the Southern Maryland rotation this year, finds himself now in Charleston for the second half. Here comes a 1-1 to Rosa. He swings, shoots this one out into 
Left center field, it'll be a long run for both outfielders. He hits off of the wall and gets away from both of them. Jay Gonzalez picks it up. Here comes the throw to third base. Rosa is on his way there, and he will slide in with a triple. Got off the bag for a moment, and Michael Martinez is going to be told that he missed the tag. Rosa was back on the base when the tag was made. Rosa did come off of the bag, but Michael Martinez wasn't able to tag him at the right moment, apparently. And so that is a leadoff triple for Rosa. It hit off of the left center field wall, got past Lattimore, and Jay Gonzalez wasn't quite at the right angle to back him up. So now the batter is Zach Jarrett. Jarrett swings, high fly ball to right field. Xander Wheel going back at the wall. Xander leaps, and that ball is gone. A home run. A two-run homer for Zach Jarrett. And Gastonia... Climbs back into it, five to three. Thought almost that ball might have hit off of Xander Wheel's glove or off of the top of the wall, either way. That is Jarrett's seventh home run of the year. And here comes Reese Hampton now, 0 for 1. Seven runs combined have been scored here in the fourth inning. Rockers five. Gastonia has two of them. I pitch down low. And the count 1-0. and oh. Second home run allowed by Evangelista today. That pitch misses low. And the count two balls, no strikes to Hampton. Reese Hampton is the Atlantic League leader in stolen bases. He has swiped 30 in 36 chances. Here comes a 2-0. And Evangelista again misses low. Three balls, no strikes to Hampton. Third base coach Chuck Stewart flashing the signs for Hampton. Would expect him to be taken all the way here. Here's the 3-0, and he is. There's a strike on the outside corner. Evangelista set 3-1 on the way. Fastball just low. And that is a walk. So it's a triple, a home run, and a walk. And that will get Frank Viola coming out of the Rockers dugout to talk to Evangelista, the rookie. Try to settle him down a little bit. So with that, we'll go ahead and tell you Atlantic League has announced their players of the month. Carlos Franco of the Orc Revolution picking up the award and Mackenzie Mills of the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs Pitcher of the Month, both of them very much deserving of their recognitions. Franco hit 372 in 24 games while driving in 29 runs on nine home runs this season, or uh, the last month. Mackenzie Mills, on the other hand, 4-0 with a 1.53 earned run average was a big part of Southern Maryland clinching the first half uh, postseason spot in the North. Rockers were supposed to see McKenzie Mills Sunday, but he was a late scratch. He found out about two hours or less away from the beginning of uh, the game, and they went with Nick Wells instead. First pitch, Jake Skoll taps it right back to the mound. It's going to be to Michael Martinez, though, who throws to first base, and that'll retire Jake Skoll. Nick Evangelista couldn't get to it. Martinez, who did have a better angle on the throw, cut it off and had to fire a strike to first base. So Skoll is out 5-3. Reese Hampton goes to second base, and that'll bring up Raider Escanio, who's 0 for 1 today. Rockers lead by 2. It's 5-3 to three. here in the bottom of the Line of thunderstorms continues to make its way forward. Down low, good scoop there by Galino. Trying to get to that halfway point, and then where you get out, passing on the cake. Evangelista set 1-0 on the way. 
Looks back at Hampton, the throw over to second base. Lattendorf completely missed the tag on the swipe, so Hampton is in safely. One out here in the fourth. Interesting note was looking at the pass results. Runner breaks for third. Here's the pitch. It's a strike. Throw down to third base goes off of the glove of Michael Martinez. It was a little bit of a high throw. But backing it up smartly was Giovanni Alfonso. So a stolen base for Hampton. His 31st of the year. The count one and one to the batter Escano. So really had a tough angle to try to make that throw, too. Scania kind of just stood there. The count one and one. Evangelista set one one on the way. And there's a fastball low two and one. Anyways, was looking at past season results for the Rock. Finished in second place in every season. Second to Somerset in 20. Second to Lexington last year, second to Gastonia this year. That pitch outside, and the count three and one. Evangelista set, three one on the way. There's a fastball out, and that's ball four. That is his second walk allowed today, second walk this inning. Runners at the corners now for Emmanuel Tapia, who homered last inning. Next pitch for Evangelista will be his 58th. Start to see some fireworks going off in the distance. They really show up nicely against the backdrop of the storm clouds that we see mounting in the distance. And first pitch coming to Tapia, fastball low. Man has now missed on five of his last pitches. Rockers looking for a ground ball up can turn two with. 1-0 coming. There's a strike and a count 1-1. Gastonia took a 1-0 lead. The Rockers scored five straight in the top inning. The Honey Hunters have come back. They led off the inning with a Rosa triple. Two run home run by Zach Jarrett. Ball, first base side. It'll be foul. And the count one and two. Now Logan Morrison caught it in foul territory. I don't know that it didn't hit Emmanuel Tapia in the, in the first place. Especially the way he was kind of standing there and trying to looks like walk that one off. One, two on the way. That's down and in. Tried to get Tapia fishing. That was unsuccessful. Fireworks starting to go off with a little regularity now, especially now down the left field side and out of play. Well, obviously out of play, but uh, out of the ballpark. And Again, that neighborhood that we talk about being on the other side of the railroad tracks, partially covered by trees. Tapia ropes this one, and that is a foul ball. Oh, goodness, that was inches away from being trouble. But again, the railroad tracks separate the ballpark from the neighborhood, and the neighborhood shrouded a little bit by trees. But you can see the fireworks just up over the crest of the trees. I've also just been informed that looks like we are under a severe thunderstorm warning and now they've got a runner hung up double steal throw and safe over at uh, is Reese Hampton Escanio took off for second Galino threw down Alfonso cut it off and the relay back home was not in time so Hampton is home on the delayed steal, and it's five to four now, and safe at second is Escanio as well. 
Hampton now 32 stolen bases. Escano has eight. Here comes the payoff pitch to he swings, grounds it foul. So again, a severe thunderstorm warning here until 8.15, so it's about another 40, uh, 30 minutes. 35. Right now, Nick Evangelista trying to figure out how to get out of this fourth inning. Payoff pitch coming, tap it right to Ladendorf at second. That will be the second out of the inning, going to third base is Escano. So the tying run stands at third. Stuart Levy, who flied out to left, will come up here in the number nine spot in the lineup. Talked a little bit about the splits that Stuart Levy has put together this year. This was some data I got from our Director of Communication Steve Shutt yesterday. Didn't get a chance to use it because Levy was not in the lineup. Set that pitch up high in the count 1 0. Stuart Levy against the Rockers hitting 353, but against the rest of the Atlantic League hitting just 203. Here's the 1 0. That's down in the count 2 0. Wonder how much of that is motivated or motivated by wanting to do well against his former club. Rockers traded him. Estonia in the this one just past the dive of Michael Martinez. We're tied. That's going to kick around in the corner. Levy is on his way to second base and continues to hit well against the Rockers on an RBI double. And the Rockers have the bullpen going. That is Stuart Levy's 26th RBI. And Jamie Keefe is on his way out. Angelista done after three and two thirds. And the Rockers are going to turn it over to Bryce Hensley. So we'll step aside. Bryce, a chance and give you his information when we come back on the Rockers Baseball Network. Rockers go to the bullpen. Bryce Hensley comes in in relief of Nick Evangelista. Hensley, 1-1, one 2.10 one, the year, 26. 13 walks, 20 strikeouts. Opponent's hitting 182 against him. And he will face left-hander Hurley Rodriguez. We are now tied at five in the bottom of the fourth inning. Can't close the book yet on Evangelista. He is responsible for the runner at second base, Stuart Levy. Two outs in the bottom of the fourth. Right after the Rockers scored five in the top of the inning, Gastonia got it all back. That pitch a strike, and the count nothing and one to Rodriguez. He is two today.
Here comes the pitch. Fastball, that just missed inside. It is getting out here now. I mentioned there's that severe thunderstorm warning in the county. But the interesting thing, if you look at the Weather Channel app, is this one is hit high in the air, left field side, long run for Lattimore, dives, can't make the catch. The ball's going to kick off the wall, Levy comes in, he'll score. And that is an RBI double for Hurley Rodriguez. And right after the Rockers send nine to the plate, so too do the Honey Hunters. They've regained the lead six to five. So that does close the book on Evangelista. Three and two thirds. All earned five hits, one strikeout, and two walks. And the base or the uh, batter will be Jack Reinheimer 0 for 2. Hensley set first pitch coming here to Reinheimer. Hit on the ground to third. Martinez backing up on it. The ball eats him up and goes into left field. Coming around and scoring is Rodriguez on what's going to be an E5, I would guess. It is now 7-5. to five. As The Honey Hunters have put six runs on the board here in the fourth. That, I think, is going to be an error on Martinez. Backed up on the ball, and it just ate him up. Here's Joseph Rosa, who led off the inning with a triple. Honey Hunters have action in their bullpen now. Here comes the pitch to Rosa. Fastball strike at the knees. And the count number. On the scoring of that last play. Sometimes information travels a little slow. Here comes an 0 1. Runner breaks for second. That pitch over Martinez down left field again. They're waving around Reinheimer. He's going to come around and score another RBI double. It is 8 to 5 Gastonia. We do find out that is an error on Martinez that allowed Reinheimer to reach. So that's an unearned run charged to Hensley. And Hensley has faced four hitters. Three of them have doubled. The other reached on an error. Here is Zach Jarrett now. Hensley set, first pitch coming to Jarrett. Honey Hunters have scored seven in the fourth. Jarrett on the ground to short. Alfonso, nice backhand, throws to first base in time. And that's the final out, mercifully, of the fourth inning. The Honey Hunters score seven. And they take an eight to feed. The good thing, this is an, a, a ballpark where you can do a lot of damage in a hurry, but Rockers will need to do it in a hurry with Ever darkening skies overhead. You don't know how much baseball we're going to get in tonight. So, Rockers need to score and they need to do it now as we head to the top of the fifth inning on the Rockers Baseball Network.
Top of the fifth inning. It is an eight to three, eight to five Gastonia lead. It is getting windy here at the ballpark. Rockers have the top of the lineup coming up. Wind coming in from left hard. Comes the pitch. Gonzalez lines this one into shallow left field. A base hit. Rockers have the leadoff man aboard in the fifth. That's a good start. That is their fifth hit. It's five runs on four hits and supposedly two errors. I've only got one listed, but we'll get a confirmation on that. And the next batter is Logan Morrison. Gastonia, eight runs on seven hits and no errors. First pitch to Logan Morrison. That's a called strike, and they count nothing in one. Everybody's still here, keeping one eye on the game, one eye on the weather radar. Morrison on the ground, knocked down by Rosa, recovers, throws to first in time. Jay Gonzalez is over there at second base now. Here is Xander Wheel over one. Wind now blowing out towards center. That could play for the right-handed slugger. Takes a strike on a check swing and they count nothing in one. It has gotten noticeably cooler, which is nice. It was 96 degrees at first pitch. Hovis takes a long look in, now set. Here comes the 0-1. Wheel takes the high fastball. We count one ball, one strike now. Well, the Rockers offense was hot in the fourth inning. They need to re-ignite here in the fifth. Hovis ready with the 1-1 coming to Wheel. Now steps off. Jay Gonzalez over there at second base. Obviously don't expect him to run here. They need to be able to take advantage of having a runner in scoring position. Here comes the 1-1. Hovis kicks and fires. Wheel takes down low and they count 2-1. It was a good pitch from Hovis and an even better take from Xander Wheel. That's one that a lot of sluggers may get caught chasing. Looks like a strike for a long time, and then the last possible moment really dipped down out of the bottom of the zone. Here comes the 2 1. Hovis fires, wheel grounded foul. Third base side into the Gastonia bullpen. The count 2 2. Looks like it has been updated. Yes, it has. Only one error charge now to Michael Martinez. I think it, it was mistakenly given two on the same play. The error was an error. Anyways, here's the pitch inside to Xander Wheel. And the count goes full. Pinch hitter in the on-deck circle. Jerry Downs is finished here. So Adam Taylor in the on-deck circle. Payoff pitch coming, though, to Xander Wheel first. Hovis holds the set now, fires. Whoa, that hits Xander Wheel. He's all right, but that's the second time in the last three days that he's been hit. Wheel was hit by a pitch on Sunday in the ninth inning. So that hit by a pitch will put two aboard with one out for Adam Taylor. Adam Taylor, 0 for 4 yesterday, also a sacrifice fly. He's a guy that could really pull one down the right field side. 
We've done it before. First pitch, Taylor swings, lofts it up, and it will go foul. And the count nothing and one. Gonzalez off of second. Reinheimer standing behind him, keeping him close by. Same at first base, Tapia behind Xander Wheel. Not holding him on, but close enough that Xander can't maybe get as much of a lead as he would normally. Here's the pitch. Taylor swings, ropes this one to center field, but right at Hurley Rodriguez, who makes the catch. Fires to second. Jay Gonzalez back safely. Adam Taylor once again hits it on the screws, but right at a defending Honey Hunter. So two on and two outs now for Quincy Lattimore. High point down three here in the top of the fifth. Lattimore today already a three-run homer as a big flash of lightning just displays up over the left center field side. First pitch coming to Lattimore. That's a fastball up and away, 1-0. and With the wind coming in from left field, he's going to have to muscle it a little bit more than he did last time if he turns on one. Here comes the 1-0. And he takes down low 2-0 now. Tyler Lattendorf in the on-deck circle. Here comes the 2-0. There's a strike. And the count 2-1. pitch for Riley Hovis will be his 83rd. This should be his final inning of work. 2-1 coming to Lattimore. He swings, hits it on the ground to short. Reinheimer goes the short way to second to retire Xander Wheel. And that retires the Rockers. So we have an official ball game on our hands. So whatever happens next, happens. Rockers down by three. We head to the bottom of the fifth. And it is an 8-5 Honey Hunters lead on the Rockers baseball network. A lot of stuff happening here in a short amount of time. A lot of stadium workers here have been clearing away things that can get blown around easily in the wind. I, some of my stat packs have been blowing around. My scorebook uh, is being picked up by the wind a little bit, or the pages are being turned. Uh, if I move my hands off of it, the general man or uh, one of the uh, front office folks of the Honey Hunters down on field with the umpires right now, they're talking and pointing up at the clouds and. Also, I want to let you know the Rockers have gone to the bullpen again. Bryce Hensley pitched a third of an inning, gave up two runs, one earned on two hits. Austin Glorious will come in in relief. Glorious on the season. Three and four, 6.08, the earned run average, 47 and third innings pitched, 30 walks, 32 strikeouts. So the big thing here with Austin Glorious, Rockers are going to try to get two innings out of him. He's in a perfect world, the long relief guy. And in a perfect world, 
which it's not perfect, but in an improving world, the Rockers is a fairly set rotation right now of Stem, Evangelista, Pinheiro, O'Sullivan as he gets stretched out, and the rookie Jonas Scalero. So it feels like uh, Austin Glorious will be able to reprise his role as that long relief guy where he has found the most success this year. He'll be facing five, six, and seven. That is Hampton, Skoll, and Escanio here in the bottom of the fifth inning of a eight to five Gastonia lead. First pitch coming and he bounces that one. They count one and oh. Reese Hampton, 0 for 1, has also walked, stolen two bases, and scored. Fastball popped up foul. And the count 1 and 1. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. High fastball, that misses away. I tell you what, I absolutely love watching the movement of Austin Glorious' pitches out of the bullpen. His stuff really plays up. Coming out of the pin. Fastball has more juice on it. That one, 92, fouled off by Hampton. And the count, two balls, two strikes now. Thing for Glorious, a quick inning here needed. The Rockers can get try to get one more crack at it offensively. Or at least one. That pitch upstairs, count goes full. Starting to see some fans head for the exits. As radar shows the line of thunderstorms. Coming up here, really one town over in Dallas. That pitch low, ball four, so Reese Hampton works a walk to lead off the fifth inning. And that brings up Jake Skoll, who's 0 for 2. Skoll is the only honey hunter who has not reached base yet today. I think that... We're expecting to see a new pitcher for Gastonia in the sixth inning. Although Hobus got out of that fifth pretty quick. Skoll takes outside, ball one. Tomorrow, the scene shifts to Truist Point, where Yvonne Pinheiro makes his home debut. He'll be facing former Arizona Diamondback Zach Godley. It'll be a tough matchup for the Rockers hitters tomorrow. Check over to first base on Hampton. He's a guy you do have to watch. Hampton back in safely. Here comes the 1 0, and that one just tapped foul. Goes back behind the plate, and the count goes to 1-1. One, one. Morrison over there at first base, trying to keep Hampton close by. Another check over. And they might have got him. Yeah, they did. A bullet from Austin Glorious and a good tag from Logan Morrison. Reese Hampton picked off. That's a big first out. You've got that kind of speed off of the base pads. Hampton really manufactured his own run the last time. He walked, moved to second on a ground out, stole third, and then stole home on a double steal. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Skoll. Cracks it foul, left field side out of play. And the count, one ball, two strikes. Glorious holds the set, 1-2 coming. Fastball line, third base side, foul. Just about took a chunk out of Calvin Baker's leg. Calvin Baker showing off the dance moves over there. He replays his own evasive move. I'll tell you what, out of all the umpires in the Atlantic League, I think Calvin Baker probably my favorite to watch. 
Got a smile on his face just about every time he's out there. There's a fastball outside from Glorious, and the count two and two. <laughs> Glorious gets the sign, ready to deal the two two to his former teammate. And that is tapped foul back to the backstop again. And the count remains 2 2. Raider Escano in the on deck circle. And here comes the rain, and here go the fans heading up for cover in a hurry. Gastonia's bullpen also emptying as Skoll grounds this first base side foul. It was just almost somebody flicked a switch. Everybody started heading up for cover. Here comes the 2-2 to Skoll. Glorious fires fastball. That's it right back up the middle. Hits off of the mound, but Alfonso scoops it up, throws to first in time, and that's the second out of the inning. Brings up Raider Escano over one with a walk and a run scored. Almost the entirety of the lower section here of Caramon Health Park has been emptied. Fans crowding two and three deep on the concourse to still watch the action. Scanio shows bunt and bunts it foul. And the count nothing and one. Again, if this is all we get in, it would be a complete game and would go in favor of the home team. Here comes the 1-0. Fastball hit on the ground up the middle. Alfonso comes in on it. Make sure the grip throws to first base in time. And that is the final out of the inning. We head to the top of the sixth, we hope. Rockers down 8-5 on the Rockers Baseball Network. Welcome back in. We are unfortunately in a weather delay here at Caramont Health Park as the wind and the rain continue to pick up. Teams are both heading to their respective clubhouses. Umpires are heading to their uh, locker room right now. So we are in a weather delay. We will give you information as we get it. But right now we'll give you an update on how this game uh, came about up to this point. So earlier on in the game, pitchers trading zeros. That was, of course, Nick Evangelista and Riley Hovis. Gastonia gets on the board, bottom of the third inning, a leadoff home run from Emmanuel Tapia makes it one to nothing. Rockers come back in the fourth inning, go for five. A base hit by Jerry Downs, tied it at one. Three-run home run from Quincy Lattimore makes it four to one high point, and an RBI base hit from uh, Mike Galino brought in Ladendorf to make it five to one up to that point. Into the bottom of the fourth inning, though, Nick Evangelista runs into trouble. A double by Rosa, a home run by Jarrett makes it five to three. More runs coming around. Hampton steals home as part of a double steal. And then RBI double from Levy, RBI double from Rodriguez, and an RBI double from Joseph Rosa. At that point, Gastonia took an 8-5 to five lead, which is where we stand now through five complete as the weather delay has taken effect. Again, no other information or updates as of right now. We looked at the radar earlier, and the, what we are continuing to see is a fairly deep line of thunderstorms coming through. The big question, again, how much do they need to get this game in as far as the, uh, going forward? It looks like we're, we're looking at rain for probably the better part of the next hour, hour and a half. It seems to be fairly slow moving. So we will see 
what goes on from that aspect. We will take a look now at the Atlantic League scoreboard. It's opening day of half number two. Game one between York and Lancaster, the Revolution win it by a final score of four to two. In the opening game there, a doubleheader in the Battle of the Roses. How about uh, JC and Cronacion continuing to have a hot uh, last couple of weeks. One for three today, but Troy Stokes Jr. up at the top of the lineup, a triple and a couple of runs batted in. And York able to get it done. Jim Fuller notches his 10th save. Game number two, they're just underway, no score. Long Island and Staten Island, they're in the middle of the sixth inning right now. And the Ferry Hawks with a four to one advantage over the Ducks at this juncture of the ball game. Both teams seven hits apiece, but right now the Ferry Hawks doing the most with it. Elsewhere in the Atlantic League, bottom of the fifth inning, Southern Maryland shutting out Charleston. It is four to nothing there. They are coming to you from Regency Furniture Stadium in Waldorf, Maryland. RBIs from Zach Collier, Joe DeLuca, and a couple from Braxton Lee. And a triple from Nick Heath earlier today as well. Now, the other game today, the Genomes and Legends, they played two yesterday, they're playing one today. Isaiah Tejeda, his 11th home run of the year. Montreal Marshall, his fifth. They are tied at three. Carlos Castro drove in his 29th of the year. Eli Villanueva and Jeff Thompson, your starting pitchers in that one. So that's a look around the Atlantic League again. Today is the beginning of, of the second half, so everybody's starting the day with a 0-0 zero and zero record. It is continuing to rain here, so we're going to step aside really quickly, see if we can find some information out, and we'll come right back on the Rockers Baseball Network. So let's see what your guess is. Welcome back into the Rockers Rain Delay Show on the Rockers Baseball Network. Still no updates right now. It continues to rain here at Caramont Health Park, and we expect it will at least for a bit. So what we're going to do here, uh, unfortunately, we don't have any alternative programming for YouTube. Uh, however, we do invite you, if you wish, to download the MixLR app. That is M-I-X-L-R. Uh, it's a free app to download. Search High Point Rockers Baseball. Again, we will post updates as we have them. But right now, what we're going to do on MixLR, we're going to send you out field a tie game between the Lexington Legends and the Wild Health Genomes so we're going to get you out there right now as uh, we continue to be in a weather delay we will give you updates periodically as we get them but for the time being we'll send you out to Lexington now a tie game between the Legends and the Genomes Off walk to Felix PA. PA walked his first time up, struck out, and now comes back to the plate to walk again. So he's 0 for 1 today, but he's been aboard twice. Legends now have more hits than the genomes in this ballgame. Five hits, three runs for the Legends, four hits, three runs for the genomes. As Carlos Castro comes to the plate, the 317 average, five home runs, and 29 RBI on the season.
Harris pitch, grounded foul into the Genomes dugout down the third base side. You know, it's interesting, these two teams will keep their own dugout. So the Genomes will have the third base dugout for every home game that they play and every game of Walt Health Field. For the Legends, they will have the first base dugout for every game that they play here, even if they are the home team. So if a team comes into Lexington, if they're playing the Genomes, they'll have the right field or the, third, the first base dugout. If they're playing the Legends, they'll have the third base side. Because the Legends had the dugout last year. They want to keep it. I Whitney said, do we know about that is? So let's play this game. Why is that? Ah, oh, the Genomes want to be in the shade. Okay, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. So Tejeda holding the runner over at first. It's one ball, two strikes. Miller the pitch, and that one's going to get down in the dirt to run the count even. Two balls, two strikes, one on, nobody down for the genomes here in the top of the fifth. Jalen Miller staying in the game for the Legends. Castro. Awaits the pitch, and he'll swing through for strike three. Down goes Carlos for the first out of the inning. Anderson Miller batting, a runner taken off. Will hit and run action as Miller will hit one in the left center field. Courtney Hawkins will make the catch for the second out of the inning and send PA back to first. Demetrius Moore now comes to the plate. If you missed it earlier, Moore came up to bat in the second inning. Should have actually let off the second inning. Milbauer did with a leadoff single to left field. Moore came up at a 1-2 count. But after the first three pitches, P.J. Phillips came out and questioned the lineup card for the Genomes. Moore actually had to go sit down back in the dugout. Luke Becker, who is the leadoff man for the Genomes, came to the plate, took over the 1-2 count. Moore was not called out. And the Genome for another run that inning. That's when they got their third run of the game. And Moore now has only had one at-bat coming into this one. He struck out back in the third inning. Miller's pitch up in the zone, a ball and a strike. Or 2-0, oh, excuse me, to Demetrius Moore, the center fielder for the Genomes. 2-0 oh, the count. Jalen Miller will check on the leadoff man and deliver the 2-0. Gets away from Jorgen behind the plate, and P.A. able to advance up to second. So 3-0, two more. He's got good speed. If Moore can get one down here and into the outfield, might drive in the go-ahead run for the Genomes. Got to throw one across the plate. Moore awaits. Miller, the 3-0. And that pitch, a called strike one. Three balls and a strike to Demetrius Moore. Moore will take the base on the walk. Three, 
Two on for Clayton Melbauer, the shortstop. Trying to get back over the Mendoza line. 193 average, two home runs, five RBI is Melbauer. Bear base hits tonight for the genome shortstop. A single to left field and a double to right center field. And again, good speed on the base is obviously more can run with the best of them in the ALPB. This one popped up into foul territory. Marshall giving it a chase. Montreal will watch it go into the stands as Melbauer goes behind 0-1. Oh and one the count, two down in the fifth inning for the Genomes. Jalen Miller's had a couple of innings in a row where he's had some close calls. Runner on second is PA. A runner at first is Moore. This one's popped up and playable. Backing up is Valdespin into the outfield, and he'll make the catch in shallow right field. Genomes once again get two aboard, but the inning comes to an end. Good defense by the Legends. We're still tied at three. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning here on the Legends YouTube channel. Pete Jorgen gets things started for the Legends in the bottom of the fifth inning, batting versus Villanueva, who's hanging in there for the Genomes. Had really been dominant until that bottom of the fourth when Tejeda and Montreal Marshall both went yard against the Genome starter. Jorgen takes one up in the zone here, 2-0. and oh. It's Jorgen, and then back to the top of the order, Boo Powell and Tillman Pugh coming up for the Legends in the fifth inning. That pitch on the outside corner, make it three and one. Lexington and Wild Health, the two teams that share this stadium. It's really been a one-sided rivalry through the first half of the year. A 13-6 and six record for... The Genomes versus their in-county rival, or in-stadium rival. I guess in-county as well. Jorgen facing the full count payoff pitch on the outside corner, and Jorgen rung up. Leadoff man in the inning down. Now 
now squared around a bunt and pulled it back for a pitch that is outside ball one. One to know the count as Powell facing off against Phil Nueva. Eli the 1-0 pitch. Powell takes inside 2-0. Two balls, no strikes. Boo Powell, Boo Powell, excuse me, squaring off against Villanueva here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Boog will foul this one off. And the count now two and one. One down here in the fifth. Villanueva, 35 years of age, has pitched very well tonight for the Wild Health Genomes as they look to once again knock off the Legends. Would be the third time in two days if the Genomes can break this tie at some point and secure a victory. Powell will swing through. Did he make contact? He did. Or make that a 2-2 two -two count. Two balls, two strikes. One down in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Legends in the Genomes here at Wild Health Field. Michael Watkins here with you on the call tonight. Fell on a wave. We'll get the sign from Castro on the 2-2 two -two pitch. Down in the dirt. Pew in the on-deck circle for the Legends. As Villanueva with the payoff pitch. And Powell will strike out swinging a nice breaking ball from Villanueva. As Powell was out in front. Couldn't, couldn't slow his spat down enough to make contact. And... For the second time tonight, Boog Powell retired. He's one for three. Now it's Tillman Pugh coming to the plate for the Legends. As Hugh pointed out, possibly the last at-bat for Pugh, unless he is to come in the field for somebody. First pitch, a call strike one to Tillman Pugh. Pew, eight home runs on the year, 32 RBI. Today, he's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Another swing and a miss in the DH for Lexington. Down behind 0 and 2 once again. Nothing and 2 to Pew. They want to wave for the pitch, and it'll get down on the dirt. Bringing the count to one ball, two strikes. Going away, but looking for a one, two, three, fifth inning. The wind up and the pitch. Swung on and missed, and Pew once again down on strikes. Third time in the game for Pew and the Legends. Down or tied at three with the Genomes, but another one, two, three inning for Villanueva. Seems like he's settled things down after that two home run third inning or fourth inning. So it's tied at three. We go to the six. These two teams, once again, in a tight ball game here, folks. Same thing we saw last night. So don't go anywhere. We're broadcasting live at Wild Health Field on the Legends YouTube channel.
as we head to the sixth inning of pitching change for the Legends as Winston Lavendier set to come in for Lexington. Lavendier has been really good in his last few outings coming in here tonight. A guy that can come in and stem the tide for you. He can, he can go a couple of innings here and help the Legends get into the latter part of this ballgame with an even score. First pitch popped up in the left field. Hawkins will come over and an easy start for Lavendier as he comes in. One pitch and one down. Got to bring up Jimmy Paredes to the plate. Jimmy tonight has doubled to right field, flown out to left center field, and struck out on his two plate or his three plate appearances. So one for three for the DH for the Genomes. Live and dear with a pitch on the outside corner called strike one. Wentz in a 3.82 ERA, 3-5 and five on the season for the Legends. The lefty wearing the long sleeve undershirt tonight. Man, I tell you what, it's a warm evening to be doing that. He'll come in here against Paredes, and Jimmy able to back away and avoid the hit by a pitch. Base is empty for Paredes here in the top of the sixth inning. The pitch is swung on and missed, and Jimmy sees the count go to one and two. One ball, two strikes. Lavendier will get the sign from Jorgen. And Paredes will take one out of the zone, even in the count up at two balls, two strikes. Lavendier gets set. And the pitch is a called strike three. Paredes. So he's swing and a miss for strike three. Paredes down on strikes. Park, it is rainy, it is for the second out of the inning. Display. Paredes down swing for the second straight at bat. Game. The Gastonia Honey Hunters have rallied to and now it's Morris' Sierra coming to the plate. Five inning ball. Sierra. The score tonight is eight to five. The Rockers will drop to 0-1 in the second half with Nick Evangel excuse me, Nick Evangelista taking the loss. And the winning pitcher is Riley Hovis, who goes the distance, again, in a weather-shortened ball game tonight. Final line score uh, for the Rockers. It is five runs on five hits, one error for Gastonia, eight runs on seven hits, and no errors. So we're back at it tomorrow. Yvonne Pinheiro gets the start for High Point, and it is Zach Godley going for Gastonia. It is former uh, major leaguer Zach Godley. 6.35, the first pitch from Truist Point. It is Kernersville night, so anybody with a Kernersville residency, well, bring your uh, proof of, of residency that you live in Kernersville and get 50% off your entire ticket order. Gates open at 6 o'clock. That's also the time that our Rockers pregame show begins tomorrow night at 6 o'clock if you're not able to make it out to the ballpark. Well, that'll wrap everything up for us tonight. And a weather-shortened second half opener. A big thank you again to Steve Shutt and everyone at the Rockers Media Department for all their hard work as usual. And with that, we're going to sign off. Final score, Gastonia 8 and High Point 5. This has been a presentation of High Point Rockers Baseball and the Rockers Baseball Network. I'm Kendrick Fruits saying have a rocking good night, and we'll see you tomorrow for more Rockers Baseball.